riding the smooth red road down into Panamint Valley was exhilarating. The USA is just ridiculously vast, and looking out into the empty nothingness ahead of me, there was absolutely no escaping just how remote this next section was going to be. Just over the next mountain ridge lay Death Valley, a place I'd dreamt of riding through ever since I'd conceived this crazy idea of unicycling around the world four years ago. Now just a stone's throw away, I was eager to begin crossing the driest place in the United States. I'm riding on a one-man wheel car, Chris and Bill, analog, 36-inch unicycle across the USA. I don't know what the hell I'm going to get myself into, do, yeah. My name's Ed, and I'm riding a unicycle around the world. Join me on this series as I attempt to cycle 4,000 miles across the United States of America. I'm in Death Valley! <laughs> or at least I'm in Death Valley National Park. I'm actually in the park. I don't think I'm actually in the valley. The valley itself, I think, is over that mountain there. So I've got that to climb tomorrow, but i uh, not going to do that tonight. I'm going to sleep tonight because I'm shattered. I've forgotten how much I love riding through deserts. It's, I, yeah, I really enjoy this kind of riding. It, it's very easy in a lot of ways. It's like one road, and then when you're tired, you just go off the road into the brush and and camp. It's You kind of don't need to really think too much. Which I quite enjoy it, because I don't really like thinking. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, anyway, get to camp here, and we'll tackle actually riding into Death Valley tomorrow. To celebrate the drop of Ed Unicycles the USA, I've released a new clothing design. These t-shirts are available in a selection of different colours. And this hoodie will keep you warm while out riding. Also, consider drinking your morning coffee from a mug with my cartoon face on it. Check out all this stuff through the Teespring link in the description. Now back to the episode. If you've been watching my series so far, you'd have noticed I like to use a heavy amount of music. This is all in an attempt to complement the visuals and best tell the story of my ride. For this episode, however, to fully immerse you in my desert crossing experience, I'm going to try something a bit different. I'm doing away with the fancy music and allowing you to suffer, with me, the true reality of unicycling through Death Valley. And, spoiler alert, this reality contains a lot of wind noise. Climbing to the top of the 5,000 foot pass ended up taking me most of the day, and by the time I started my descent, it was already getting dark. I camped halfway down the valley, and continued on the next day, filming a few seconds of video each time I passed an elevation marker. Slowly descending into Death Valley, and I've just come across Stovepipe Wells, which is the first kind of place that I've seen for the last couple of days. I took the opportunity to refill my water bottles and buy a couple of loaves of bread at the store, and then headed back out into the elements. Oh my god! The wind had really started to pick up, buffering me around and making balancing the unicycle a real challenge. What's worse was that my new saddle that I'd installed in Bakersfield, and had pretty high hopes for reducing my saddle sores, actually seems to be causing my bum more pain than the previous one. Bloody hell! If it was challenge I was searching for, I'd certainly found it. And it seemed my ordeal was far from over. All morning I've been watching a cloud of sand slowly creep towards me. A few miles down the road from Stovepipe Wells, it hit me like an absolute brick wall. shelter just behind this rock but it's not much fun as soon as I leave this shelter I'm gonna be blasted with sand and I thought the wind was throwing me off balance before I was all over the road now just barely managing to keep my unicycle upright 
and not for the first time on this trip, was questioning why on earth I was out here doing this. I pushed on into the sandstorm for another mile, when, out in the distance, I spotted a familiar white minivan. <laughs> <laughs> look, who, look who's come and uh, found me, it's Bobby, he's come back. Yeah. Cheers man, thank you for, for coming out, you're like um, a support vehicle for me today. <laughs> yeah, I wanna to just to make, kind of like a, a, like a welfare check, just to make sure. <laughs> I'm fine. It's just, yeah, going to be a lot of slow walking in the next couple of days, I think. Yes, when I saw you on this side, my gosh, I have, have this, uh, you know, mask, and I know it's a, it's a, it's a slow going. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm trying to make a decision which side of the road to walk on, but I think this side is best because I can actually see the cars. Right. And then I can scoot off, but it's... Right. Because this side, it's like I can't really look behind me when I'm walking. It right. doesn't really work. Yesterday, I had a very weird experience with riding bicycle in the strong wind mm. my nose feels different i have to tilt my head a little bit because otherwise the wind seemed to be doing something to my nose oh like the yeah, like, the sand, yeah. yeah something i don't know it just uh, yeah. just uh, i never experienced that in my whole life <laughs> i've been taking sand out of my nose today <laughs> right i'm like thinking it's like full of sand but anyway uh you're doing absolutely Great, you know this is a this is a very very top section. But yeah. once you pass Las Vegas, obviously there's a maybe a little bit desert situation, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, slowly you will see more and more yeah. population, yeah. particularly when you hit uh, Colorado and from that yeah. point on. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I intend for it to get a bit yeah. easier, I guess. But it's yeah, but no, this is all right. Yeah. I'll, uh, oh yeah, and uh, Bobby also got me a a Big Mac. As well. <laughs> sure, from from a seventy miles away. <laughs> Actually, eighty miles away. Eighty miles away. Wow, it's <laughs> done some distance this Big Mac. Hopefully, it's still warm. It doesn't matter, man. It really does not it's, matter. Uh, it's uh, it should be. The burger was cold, Bobby. But seriously, what did I care? For the few minutes I was sitting in your van, tucking into a double cheeseburger, I felt like an absolute king. Thank you for driving all the way out from LA twice just to check up on me. Hey, After that unexpected but very welcome rest stop, I continued my battle with the elements. <laughs> By sunset, I'd reached sea level. Oh my god! And even though it didn't seem quite possible, the wind speeds increased once again. In fact, the wind was so ridiculously strong now that I physically couldn't ride anymore, so I continued on foot. I forced myself to carry on into the wind, hoping to push out a couple more miles before light faded on me completely. I stuck to the left hand side of the road, my theory being that at least if I walked on this side I'd be able to see the oncoming traffic coming towards me, because in this wind I couldn't hear a damn thing. Eventually it was well and truly dark, and I needed to search for some shelter to pitch my tent behind. Now I say shelter. But out here, in the barren desert, this is the best I could do. Did you know you can watch these episodes a week early on Patreon? Well, you can, and all these wonderful people are already doing it. So thank you very much if you're supporting me over there. Uh, and I want to say a particularly big thank you to all my third tier supporters. And they are Adam Fink, Andrew Thomas, Axel Fontaine, Derek Donovan, Elijah Legenda, James Little, Kelly Jackson, Kentaro Sakino, Mark C, Mark Paris, Stephen Jones, Tori, Tommy, Nurmas Javi, and Warren Snyder. Uh, thank you very much for supporting me over there. It allows me to keep doing what I'm doing uh, and making these videos. So thank you very much. Good morning. <laughs> I camped behind a bush last night in a dry riverbed. The tent was rattling all over the place and I was a bit concerned that I might get blown up. Well, not blown away, but I was concerned that the tent might get ripped up because that was some serious, serious wind. Um, it's half seven in the morning um, and I'm just packing up and gonna get on the road. The next morning was more of the same, wind and walking. And I'm not gonna lie, at this point, I was cursing my past self for thinking heading into Death Valley was a good idea. 
I was also cursing my present self for deciding to film this whole ordeal, because in order to capture the shots that you just watched, I had to set up my camera, turn around, and then walk back down the same section of road just to pick up my camera. It's kind of ridiculous, isn't it? Ten miles and four hours later, I arrived at a place called Furnace Creek. As far as I could see, there wasn't much more than a petrol station there, so I restocked my dwindling water supply and kept on walking. Well, I think I camped at about minus 200 feet last night, um, but there wasn't a sign there, so I'm using this one. See? <laughs> so, I can't get any lower. <laughs> Oh, it's not funny, is it? It's not funny. There aren't many parts of the world where you find yourself on land but below sea level. The only other time I experienced this was in northwest China, riding through the Turpan Depression in Xinjiang province. And looking back, both these landscapes were remarkably similar. Anyway, this sign marked the end of my descent into the valley, meaning I could finally begin my climb out. The small peaks ahead were a very welcome barrier to the brutal, energy-sapping winds I've been facing for the last couple of days, and I could finally get back to riding my unicycle, instead of pushing it like some kind of awkward wheelbarrow. Needless to say, I was pretty excited to be pedalling again. To have a day where there's no wind in my face, or no wind at all really, is so great. I can actually get on the bike and ride, because I haven't been able to ride for a couple of days, it's just been so windy. So yes! Climbing out of Death Valley, and we can actually ride again. And with this newly acquired energy, I pushed on to the exit of the park. So that's it, leaving Death Valley now. I'd love to say that it was, uh, it was a good time, but it really wasn't. It was tough as anything. Like two, one day of walking up a mountain, and then two days of walking into the wind, blasted by sand, it was an experience, I can say that much. Death Valley, it was an experience. You may wonder why I choose totally voluntarily to put myself through these unpleasant ordeals. Truth is, I love it. And not in a masochistic, I enjoy pain kind of way, but more like I enjoy the satisfaction that comes from achieving something difficult. This section in Death Valley, as you've seen for yourself, was not easy. But the accomplishment I felt arriving at the other side was immense and I think well worth the struggle. Onwards, my sights were well and truly set on my next challenge, the final 100 mile desert section across the California-Nevada border and onto Las Vegas. But to see how I get on, you'll have to tune in to the next instalment of Ed Unicycles, the USA. If you're feeling impatient and can't wait for next week's video, you're in luck, because the next episode is available right now on my Patreon. And if you're feeling really impatient, you can head over to Vimeo and watch the entire Ed Unicycles the USA series from start to finish over there. Your support is greatly appreciated. Well, this old thing ain't built for speed, but I love my trusty dusty speed. It'll get me around the world soon, then I'll try for moon. I know my route is roundabout, but I sure as hell don't have a doubt. It'll get me where I'm going, as long as the wind is blowing. I'm well aware of dangers out there, and it's not that I don't.